Exponential equations can also be used to calculate the growth of an investment at a certain interest rate. The general equation that we used on the previous page for number 1 and 2 can be used if the interest rate is added once a year. So here's how we would write the equation for um, an initial investment of $2,000 that is increasing at a rate of 4% interest. So we're adding 4% interest at the end of every year. And after five years, this would be what we'd have. And we could also write that, of course, as 2,000 times 1 plus, or 1 .04, 0 0.04 to the t to the fifth power. Okay, so t, of course, would be our variable, but we're putting 5 in there for five years. So what happens when you calculate it? You get $2,433.31. So the 400, the interest is the $433.31, which is money the bank just pays you for leaving the money in their, in their account. Pretty good deal. Now, um, I'm going to just change a couple of the variables. Typically, we use P for principal, the starting amount, and then A represents just the amount after T years. But another bank says, hey, I've got a better deal for you. Let's add the interest every quarter, every three months. Same interest rate, but we're going to add it every three months instead of once a year. So what would the equation look like? Well, if you're going to add the interest four times a year, you're not going to add 4% four times a year. You're going to add one-fourth of 4% four times a year. So you take the interest rate, divide it by four. So basically, you're going to add 1% four times a year. And you see up here this says NT instead of just T because you're adding, you're adding the interest rate for five years, but you're doing it four times a year. So basically you're adding the interest rate 20 times every three months for five years, 1% at a time. So do, does that end up being a better deal? Well, if you calculate this um, on your calculator, and I would suggest that you practice doing this on the calculator and just type in the whole thing. Okay, so I think I'm just going to clear this off from my last problem and just show you 2,000 and in parentheses then you do 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 4 outside the parentheses and then raise that. And I'm just going to raise that to and I can say uh, 4 times 5 or I could just put 20 there. So we end up with $2,440.38 two, um, $2, so it is a little better. Not a lot better, but a little bit better. Um, we've made a, about seven more dollars. As a matter of fact, um, this is plus seven dollars and seven cents. So now, for a two thousand dollar investment, that's not a big difference. But if you had a two million dollar investment, then you're making a, a lot more money with that little bit of extra interest. Okay. So what happens then if someone says, "Okay, I'll, let's go even better. Let's add it every month." So you're going to take this 4% divided by 12, so you're doing a twelfth of 4%, um, which is about a third of a percent per month, and then you're going to be adding it 12 times a year, so you're going to be adding the interest rate 60 times. So how much more do you think that's going to go up? Maybe pause, figure it out, write it down, and then come back. Okay. I got $2,441.99 which is a little more, but not as much. It's $1.61 more than what I had before. Well, what if we added the interest daily? So every day we're going to add 1 365th of 4%. Now, somebody brought up that maybe there's a leap year and there's 366 days, and, and that would occur at least once during that five-year period. True. So, so we're going to ignore that for right now and just say 365 each year. Um, what, what do we end up with if we add 1 365th of the 4%, 365 days a year for five years? Well, you end up with $2,442.78, which is a little bit more than it was before, but not much. Now we're at, so this is adding $1.61. This is only adding 79 cents to the overall interest rate. Once again, not very much if you're investing $2,000, but if you were investing $2 million, it would still add up. So what do we notice here? We notice that as we keep adding the interest more often, we get an increasing amount, but it's less each time. 
So the question is, is there some sort of limit to how much, like what if we added every minute or every second or, or three times a second or just infinity and an infinite amount of times? Is there a limit to it? And it turns out the answer is yes. And it's a very interesting result. So here's what we're going to do to explore that. We notice that the difference between our original equation, which just had the 1 plus r to the t power, is the 1 plus r over n to the nt. And the difference is this 1 plus 1 over n to the n power. That's the, different, that's the part that's kind of different here. So what we're going to do is see what happens to this number as we make n bigger and bigger. So there's a chart below that you're going to be filling in. I'm just going to show you how to do this on your calculator in a really efficient way. So um, you can type in 1 uh, plus 1 divided by 10 to the 10th power and do a control enter, otherwise it'll give you a fraction enter it. And there's your first number you'll put in your chart. And I want you to put in about 10 decimal places because it will make a difference as you, as you write the chart. Now you don't have to retype this every time. Up arrow with your calculator two times till you highlight this expression, push enter to copy it down, and then just go in and edit. Change this to 100, and you're going to have to down arrow. Change that to 100, push control enter again, and there's the next number you'd get. Okay, So I want you to do this on your calculator so you get familiar with your calculator. Make sure you can also do this. to go down, add another zero in here, control enter. Okay, so you see that we're getting this series of numbers. So what happens, what I'd like you to do is fill in the chart and then uh, pause the video, fill in the chart, and then open this back up and let's see what happens. So here are the values that I'm getting if I were to write all these decimal places. And what I want you to notice is as you go, we start seeing that starting with um, the, with 100, the decimal place, the first decimal place stays 7. Starting with the second, with the 1,000, the second decimal place stays 1. Starting with 10,000, the third decimal place stays 8. Starting with 100,000, the fourth decimal place stays at a 2. With 1 million, the fifth decimal place stays as a, at an 8. And what we're going to see is the bigger this number gets, the more decimal places just stay the same. You might recognize this number, um, and once again, we see that it's increasing, but just by a slighter and slighter amount each time. This number actually, this expression, if we make n go to infinity, actually turns into a number. So I'm going to do this last one, this 10,000. Actually, maybe I'll do even a bigger one. What I can do is, let me copy this, and let's just uh, go up. I'm going to up arrow, and I'm just going to change this to 10 to the maybe 8th power. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same down here, 10 to the 8th power. Control Enter, I get this number. Now I'm going to put another number on my calculator. If you go down to the Pi button, which is on the lower left-hand corner, um, and push Pi, you'll see this number E. This is not the same value you'll get if you use E on the keyboard. You have to do E from this menu. Do a control enter, and E is this number here. If you keep making this number, the 10, these two numbers bigger and bigger, this expression turns into the number E. And I'm going to drop this down and just show you here. What's interesting is if we were to graph uh, the function 1 plus 1 over x to the x power and just let x get bigger and bigger and bigger, what happens is that the function has an asymptote and it levels off to the number e. So this number, I'm going to write down this is equal to e. This is a very famous number like pi that is used many, many times in calculus especially, but all, and all through math, and it's a very important number, so you should be going, ooh, ah, at this point be impressed that this is the number E. So at the top of the next page, I kind of sim I, I summarize what we just said. We say this in mathematical lingo as 
the limit as n goes to 100 of 1 plus 1 over n to the nth power is e. And so it also turns out that the limit as n goes to 100 of 1 plus r over n to the nth power is e to the r power. So that means we can take 1 plus r over n to the nth and replace it with e to the r. And this becomes the formula for compounding continuously. In other words, if we compounded interest, added interest an infinite number of times per year, this is what we would get. So go back and calculate now what we would get with e in here. So remember e is a number on the calculator, so we'd say 2,000 times e to the 0.04 times 5. And you'll see that it ends up being very close to the last number that you got when we compounded 365 times a year. And I'm going to stop there and let you finish the last page yourself. I lied. I'm going to show you one more thing on the calculator so you'll know. So we go to your calculator, and how do you do this on the calculator? 2,000. Now you'll notice there's an e to the x button. Push the e to the x. That opens the exponent automatically, and then you can do 0 0.04 times 5. And you get $2,442.81. $2,442.81. So if we compare that to the last one we had, so when we were doing the 365, when n was 365, we got $2,442.78. So the most we're going to get out of this is three more cents, no matter how many times we can compound continuously. So this is how banks do it now. They use the co continuous compounding, and you'll see that in advertisements, continuously compounded. So now you can uh, work on the other two problems. Um, if you need to on these, on these, you can put these in your calculator and see what they look like. Um, but, and then um, how can you tell if the exponential function is increasing or decreasing just by looking at the equation? So see if you can figure that out. And then there's a challenging problem here at the end, number six. We will talk about it in class if you can't figure it out.